And we're back with some more oxygen not included on Oasis. And today, well, today is all the side projects I've been putting on the long finger. Uh, this one here is going to be a petroleum boiler. Now, I was looking at a, some great work done by Tony Advanced Oni on... They were doing a whole bunch of work with volcanoes and magma and how to tame them and how to do diff different tricks of getting them to work. Uh, I was trying to figure out how to use his, one of his new uh, techniques to get mm, to make a more efficient petroleum boiler. Unfortunately, it just won't work. Not with the, the design I currently use. But I'm going to have to do some more work on that in the background. So this is just going to be a traditional petroleum boiler. Sort of like, uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, like this one. It'll be this design. I'm just going to move it down a bit. Anyway, we'll just skip forward a bit as I get all the prep work in place for this. So I'm just putting together the uh, the magma tank first. I want to get all the oxygen out of here and start stockpiling magma. Reason being, it takes a while for sometimes for the magma to stock up. Another reason I'm using these two volcanoes is, well, with two volcanoes, I have a much better chance of... Oh, don't entomb yourself. Don't, don't do it. Mm. You know what? Let's, uh... Yeah, let's just deconstruct that. Perfect, perfect. Everyone gets that happy. Yeah, the reason I've got two... Well, I'm, I chose this spot was it has two magma volcanoes, which means I can fill up the magma tank an awful lot faster here. Just because I'm in a, I'm in a rush. Well, we're always in a rush, I suppose. I'm going to put in a quick liquid lock up here to prevent any of the gases escaping, and that should be fairly straightforward. There is absolutely zero way I am removing those insulated tiles until all the the gases are out of here. Otherwise, yeah, this place is going to cook. Up. The rocks there are at what 1200 C, 1300 C. Yeah. I remember last time I came in here, I got badly scalded. Something to do with phosphorus. I'm going to be a little bit more careful this time. Now the uh, the start of the magma dropper will go in over here. Then we'll put in the counterflow right along here. Ooh, will I be able to squeeze it? I should be able to squeeze it in above that oil reservoir. This one can also be quite short. We have so much magma to draw in here. Two magma volcanoes, I could... Oh, we could definitely be really inefficient. But I'm, I have a set of standards, so I'm just going to make the counterflow the exact same size as a normal uh, as a normal one. I'm not going to skimp, because the moment you start skimping and taking shortcuts, maybe something doesn't work quite right, or something breaks. I'm just going to fly through all of this. You've seen one of these go up before, or if you haven't, there's a, a previous video in the Let's Play series where you can check one of these getting built. But I think since it's number two, we'll just uh, we'll skimp a lot. I'm going to just pull out the gases in the, the boiler itself. I'm not going to make a big room like I did last time. This is going to be simple, fast, efficient, theoretically. This is turning out to be quite a fun project. I've got most of it completed in general, though I do need to do a double check on the automation. This should be fairly simple, uh, though I have forgotten to open these volcanoes, haven't I? Yeah, time to open these up, and I'll open up the bottom one first, analyze it, and then I'll open up the top one and I'll analyze that. I'd like to at least know what's in them this time around, if at all possible. Yeah, this is the point where I'm wondering, is that going to erupt while the dupe is there or not? This is really eating into my productivity, because I'm just watching Doc Dupe in a very paranoid fashion, wondering if they're about to start getting scalded by, by some molten magma. Uh, what's their what's their science at? 26 science. Yeah, this should, this should be good. Th that's the fastest sciencer in all of science. Come on. Come on. Success. Okay. Volcano. Both volcanoes analyzed. That one had 0.2 of a cycle left in it. This one has 0.7. I'm going to have to let these erupt for about 10-20 mm, cycles or so. Uh, next dormancy 13, next dormancy 51. Yeah, yeah, I should be able to fire this up fairly quick. I've already started putting in the uh, the oil reservoir little rooms as well. This thing should fly together really quickly from now on, from this point on. And that's it pretty much built. All I've got to do now is provide it with the crude oil necessary to run it. And, well, maybe accumulate some more magma. I don't quite have enough magma just yet. I'll wait till it gets up to about here so we can be sure we've got a clean start on this one. In the meantime, this is going to be my second petroleum tank. Once I get rid of all the uh, gunk I've accumulated, and that should be, yeah, that should be our second petroleum butter almost ready to go. So we got them all spinning up now. The water from this I'm taking off of this line down here. This is the line that feeds the other three oil wells at the bottom of the map. So I'm pulling six kilos of water off this line. And all of that water is being drawn from way, 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 way over here. Which is also feeding what else? It seems to be going up to the top of the map to feed... Oh my... Oh wow, that's actually feeding a Rodriguez up there. Uh, I'm going to have to... Yeah, that can potentially consume almost four kilos of water. Mm, combined with six... Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I'll just... Uh, any more water I have to pull off that line is not an option. I'll have to run a second line from the water tank. Also, I'm going to have to put more water into that water tank. It's not going to withstand six kilos of water coming out of it per second. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'm going to need to let these run for a bit until the oil starts 
popping over the edge. Once it does, I can vacuum them out, and once they're vacuumed out, they'll be uh, ready to go. While we're waiting for all of these oil wells to fill up and for us to get more magma, oh, I got set up a quick shut off here. I don't want this filling up with too much oil just yet. Uh, I have to wait till the magma fills up before we can switch this on. So in the interim, what I want to do is... Tony Advanced only did some really great work on volcanoes recently, and I want to make a volcano boiler. Well, not a volcano boiler, a geothermal eh, power plant, just a small one. I've got a volcano up here, and I think this would make a good petroleum... Well, not petroleum boiler, a volcanic boiler location. I have my own little design I've been working on that I think... Ah, oh, it's, it's... It's different. We'll see how it works out. I steal a bunch of ideas from uh, Tony Advanced Tony. I'll stick his uh, links to his videos in the description below so you can have a look. And uh, we'll see how it works out. It should generate enough power to help with the system, but it won't be anything too huge. It'll just be, well, more of a little passion project on the side. So to make this all come together, I have run some extremely long cabling and piping for, well, because, just because. The power cable goes all the way over here to my power spine, which is on the left-hand side of the map. I, I now remember why I put the power spine through the middle. It, it, it's actually easier to pull stuff off it, but eh. Um, so yeah, the power cable has to go the entire length of the map just to get over to this new, uh, new power source, or this new, uh, well, boiler that we're making. Uh, piping-wise, I've run a pipe the entire, almost the entire length of the map just down to the oil biome so I can get some crude oil up there for the liquid lock. Afterwards, I thought, wait a minute, why didn't I just, you know, get a bottle emptier and do it that way? But then I remember I always forget the bottle emptiers. So you know what? Even if it's a little bit of digging, I'm taking the pipe all the way up from the bottom of the map to get to that liquid lock field, at least I won't forget about the liquid lock. You know, good signs. Uh, once that is in place, we can start putting in the ventilation and start vacuuming this place out. Now, rocketry-wise, I've been continuing on with some harvesting of the planets for more super coolant material. Also, I refitted this rocket to be the research rocket and refitted this one to be uh, from research to cargo because this one could go a little bit further. I needed to stick on an extra fuel tank, so I needed the extra height. So this rocket here is now capable of going to some of the further re planets for research. Uh, where is it? Oh, wrong one. Uh, so I've managed to check out interstellar interstellar ice. Mm -hmm. And next up will be the living planet. Then I can reconfigure it for shattered planet. I'm really curious what happens when you explore shattered planet. Don't don't spoil it for me. Don't spoil it for me. Uh, actually, I should get that done in this episode. Anyway, uh, in the meantime, this project is still going on, but there are so many build commands queued up, this is going to take a little while. So uh, let's just skip forward a bit. Uh, I should, I'm going to need a fair bit of magma to get this running, so I probably should have done this with a double volcano, but yeah. Uh, I had stuff to do, never thought about it. Uh, at the same time, we'll just zoom out a bit. Damn, this space is getting kind of chock-a-block. Uh, over here, I managed to forget to vent out the oxygen out of these, so I ended up dumping a bunch of oxygen, uh, a mix of oxygen and natural gas out to uh, seal these in. But now it's done. They're all uh, switched over to natural gas in there. They've got their liquid seals going on. I've put in my temperature shift plates. That's all sorted. We're just waiting for this to stockpile enough magma that I'm comfortable turning it on. I'd prefer to have it up to about, say, this level, just to make sure that we have enough magma to make sure it starts up, because it will consume a lot of magma when it starts up. Uh, barring that, I also want to start tapping into those natural gas geysers. There's three or four of them, I think, on the map. Time to start dumping them into the system, and I may want to, I may want to expand my hotbox. Oh, I feel like I should point out... Uh, it's not a good idea to run a hot map. I mean, if you're a newer player, this is this is more just uh, fun to see if it can be done. Everything around here should really be insulated. I'm sending uninsulated crude oil and hot water around the map higgledy-piggledy like I don't care because that was just to see if it can be done and still successfully, you know, have fun at the game. So maybe don't do a hot map. This should not be, unless you've got a bit of experience under your belt, I probably wouldn't advise you to be attempting stuff like this. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to start getting ready to expand this as well, because we're going to be adding on five more petroleum generators in here, so I need to maybe rip out some of this stuff and leave myself some more room. I think I can fit five more petroleum generators in there pretty quickly. Yeah, that's pretty handy. Five petroleum, extra petroleum generators. However, that's probably going to be close to my limit, unless I want to start sticking in more steam turbines. <laughs> um, yeah, these things jump out 750 grams of water per second when they're active, uh, so these steam turbines can take out two kilos. So, say 10 steam turbines, two a piece for each, st or 10 petroleum generators, two for each steam turbine, that's about 1.5 kilos of water. We'll have to go through each steam turbine just to keep the water out of this room, go to get the pressure in here getting any higher. Hmm. Well, eh, I can live with that. Now, the thing is, I'm going to have to expand my slickster farms as well. I need more slicksters because my food is not going up anymore, and I should be really hiring more duplicates. Um, I'm, I've stopped at 30. I 
want to keep hiring more so I can have more astronauts available and get more dupes trained up, but that means I need more meat, and for more meat, I need more slicksters. Uh, I was going to go with shovels, but considering the amount of rockets I'm going to be running, I'm not sure I'll have enough sky to harvest regolith. So, time to expand this room. Um, probably may... I won't mind having a few extra stories to cram stuff into. Well, all that is going on, I'm finally analyzing this volcano. We'll see how much uh, magmite gives us. I may have to leave uh, turning this on until next episode. I've, I, I want to wait until it's got a decent amount of magma in it before I start doing anything too crazy. Uh, bearing that, everything else is still going according to plan. Uh, how are we looking on the magma front? Second petroleum boiler-wise, magma is getting up there. I might just leave that just a little bit longer. What are we looking at here? Next dormancy 33 cycles, next dormancy 0 cycles. Yeah, this will be fine. 15 cycles. Yeah, I'll give that another 15 cycles. With those two eruptions, that should get it well beyond the point where I need it. Uh, these have all shut off. I just put in a, a quick little shut off here to make sure this uh, crude oil wouldn't overflow. I'll later on reconfigure it so it instead dumps itself into the into the petroleum boiler. Uh, this water is starting to get a bit high. I am at, at, very, at the very end of the game. I will dump that into the magma biome and see if I can't find some way to generate stupid amounts of steam power out of it but for the time being that can stay there uh it's taking up lots and lots of space it takes up so much space it actually surrounds three volcanoes there's three volcanoes in here that i can't use because they're surrounded in a, a subsurface ocean anyway next project up will be tapping into these steam vents or these uh natural gas geysers i'm just going to plug them in really quickly into my natural gas grid this should just take a few minutes all all these little side projects involving natural gas usually pretty quick make a box stick in a, a steel gas pump Put in a little gas reservoir for a reserves, just in case uh, the line you're out putting it on has any problems. And that should be the end of it. Oh, and uh, maybe dig that out. Don't want those in there. Oh, I'm going to have to make a ladder. You know what? They can stay in there. A couple of natural tiles. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, it's not fine. I forgot to put in the automation wires. Oh, well. It will soon be fine. Now we just quickly vacuum out any of the oxygen that managed to stay in there. Uh, I'm just dumping it out here. I don't care right now. Well... I don't really care at all. What I've done is I have installed a gas pump down here at the bottom and occasionally turn it on. Uh, enable building. What it does is it sucks out all the carbon dioxide, any natural gas, anything that ends up down here, and it goes through a little bit of filtration. And the, uh, the natural gas gets dumped into my system, the oxygen gets dumped back in here, and then the everything else that isn't natural gas or oxygen gets dumped into space. And that has allowed me to clean out vast area, well, clean out the bottom of the map so it's... Ooh, you're done. Uh, yeah, time to hook you up to the system. So we'll deconstruct that high pressure valve. So now we just hook that onto this here. That line goes all the way up. It goes into my natural gas generators. So it's just a good way to burn it off. And we'll just set this to if the pressure in here is above 1 kilo. Uh, 500 grams actually is fine. Pressure is above 500 grams. That will vent it out. I didn't even bother analyzing it because I don't care. Natural gas is not that valuable to me, especially when the amount of power levels we're dealing with at the moment, it's not a huge bonus. Now, uh, oh, are you ready yet? Nope, still haven't got enough of that. Time to finish off expanding this. I'm going to drop this whole level down to here and fill the whole thing in with more granite temperature shift plates. This might take a little time, so I think this prep work is going to take a little time. I may just go grab a cup of tea. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just really fast forward this quite heavily but uh i don't think i need all these granite temperature shift plates but maybe i do so you know what i might as well take the time to install them and plus i want a cup of tea seven cycles later and we're almost done there is some benefits to having lots and lots and lots of dupes uh we should be finished up on this shortly once this is done uh ooh, you know what i should start putting in the other prep work i want to seal this off and preheat it a bit before i allow it in here this place is all 145c but if i start dumping this in here i don't think it'll stay 145c for very long now, this little system is almost ready to go. We've almost finished off all that... Oh, wait, missed one. Almost finished off all of the uh, the ship plates in there. But at the same time, we now have enough enough uh, magma that we can start firing up the petroleum boiler. Though, I do have to finish the piping. I've been throwing in piping. I've, I've thrown in construction projects all over the map. My dupes have been going a bit crazy, doing lots and lots of work. I've also started doing some work on this uh, natural gas vent over here. I've thrown in some automation over here for the, just for the petroleum boilers. I've hooked them up onto their own little grid and I've given them, put their storage tanks right in here because I don't care. <laughs> I suppose it's the simplest method. I could have made a vacuum sealed area outside of here to store them, but I figure I'm about to expand this area and have a lot more space for more batteries and transformers. So it doesn't really matter if I dump a few uh, liquid reservoirs in here. Uh, so that's all of that ready to go. And once this piping is finished, where's the pipe? I ran a pipe all the way up through, through here. 
and that leads all the way back to the petroleum boiler at the bottom. Is that all done? Yes, I think we are just about ready to fire this sucker up. Let me just do some quick uh, double checks. I think we're good to go on this one. Let's hook this sucker up and see if she'll flow. Oh, why are you already on? You shouldn't be on. That should pour some crude oil in here. We want to get this system... Oh, yeah. See, the problem is I have this uh, temperature sensor here. And that temperature sensor won't become active until some liquid gets up to touch it. Eh, my bad. Uh, in the meantime, we should probably cycle the system. No, no, no. In the meantime, we should stop any dupes from getting in here. Ever again. We're just going to wall them in. I don't want any dupes getting in there just because of that drop, that petroleum drop liquid issue. If I wall this off and this never flashes to sour gas, then it was definitely that that was causing the issue. If it's not, I'll do some maintenance on the offside and I'll make it the same as the other petroleum boiler. Uh, anyway, well, that should hopefully be finished before that it becomes two tiles. And there we go. All done. Now, just let's double check these settings. Uh, if the temperature here is above 403, yes, open the doors. And you, if the temperature is below 440, I want you to activate. Yes, okay, that should be correct. Now, cycle the doors using this. That will fill up the system. We only need to use this once. Are we done? Are you full? Yeah, you look like you're full. Yeah, we'll cycle that off, and then we'll deconstruct it. We don't need it anymore. System is primed. Now we just got to wait until the... Mm. Until this hits that, these doors won't engage. I mean, until the crude oil touches this temperature sensor and this detects the temperature of the crude oil, these doors will not engage. Once that happens, the doors will engage and now we'll start dumping heat in there. Hopefully fast enough to convert it. Hmm, well, we'll find it in a minute. I may have dumped too much in there and we may get some pressure damage. Oopsie. Oh, wait, I'll turn this off now. Uh, yeah, we'll just stop this for a minute so that the... the magma has time to catch up. We are dumping heat in quite rapidly, but if I keep dumping crude oil in, we might not be able to hit it fast enough. There we go. It's all converting. Just don't give me any pressure damage. Don't give me any pressure damage. Excellent. Excellent. So, system is pretty much ready to go. Let's turn it on. And that should be it. Crude oil will flow in here. It'll get turned into petroleum. Petroleum will get pumped out and sent up to our new petroleum generators. Of course, this is going to dump an extra two and a half kilos of carbon dioxide into that room, so I'm going to have to take care of that. But, you know, every time you add something on, there's a knock-on effect of about two or three extra things you got to take care of. But that should be that. Perfect. I'll keep an eye on that in the background, but that should be the end of that system. Now, I just want to keep an eye on the crude oil down here. I've set this to 9750, and I figured, even with the ventings, it should... I should get that much from these three... Oh, I'll explain myself a bit better. These three oil wells would theoretically, if they ran 100% of the time, produce 10 kilos of crude oil per second. However, they need to get vented, and because they get vented, they stop spitting out oil at that time, so I'm not sure what it will average out at, because it does depend on the tinkering scale of my duplicates and a few other things. So I'm guesstimating it's 9750, though I think it's probably a little bit lower like, than that. It might even be only 9.5 kilos. I'll, I'll find out as uh, this goes on. Anyway, how's the crude oil doing there? Uh, it's getting preheated, the temperature efficiency is going up, we'll stop burning so much magma. Yep, yep, excellent. So, back to the project at hand. This one. Okay, we do have to vacuum out all the oxygen and gases in here, and since subtlety is not something I have ever been accused of when it comes to this game, uh, let's just uh, go with lots and lots and lots of gas pumps. Uh, as been mentioned before, I could use miniature gas pumps, but you know what? That would require me to put in more effort and gas pipes and... Other stuff, you know what? Brute force and ignorance. This will cost me three kilowatts of power drain for a while, but I think we'll be fine. I might, I might get a few brownouts again. On the plus side, my other petroleum boiler should be coming online shortly, and that will, well, hopefully help take some pressure off the system. Oh, it's already flowing. We've got petroleum coming out of that system, which means we're up to a 20 kilowatt grid, and that's excluding the natural gas. Nice. Uh, how's our natural gas line looking? Completely empty. There's no natural gas flowing in. I don't think I've hooked up the natural gas to... Have I hooked them up to anything? I don't think I've even hooked them up to a battery. I have not hooked them up to a battery. I really should set them to kick in if uh, there's a problem. Now, just to cover what's going on with my petroleum generators, my both my sets of my petroleum generators, they're both hooked up to two separate batteries, but the settings are the exact same. If my power goes below 60, they turn on. Once my power hits 90, they turn off again, or once the battery levels hit those. 
now I've just hooked up another set of automation wire. It's just going to go up here and plug into the natural gas generators. And if my power goes to 40, and the only way my power would go to 40 is if all 10 petroleum generators are on and they're still at 20 kilowatts of power, they're not producing enough power to meet demand, then the natural gas, then the power will drop below 60% on the batteries. And when it hits 40, the natural gas generators will kick in to help try and dump more power into the system. But only then. Natural gas is effectively my emergency power source. And that gas pump that's there, that can go. Uh, the reason that gas pump is there in the first place was I had some sour gas in here earlier from that uh, natural gas, or that volcano catastrophe. Uh, that was why all of this junk is in here, I think. Yeah, this can all go. All of it. It was just a, a big mess. I had to move the gas pumps around until I eventually got rid of all. And I mean all of it. Wait one second. Yeah, that can all go actually every single last bit of it all of that gas piping was just while i was trying to sort out the sour gas i did all of that off screen because sorting sour gas out of that collection of uh, carbon dioxide and steam was probably not the most entertaining thing in the world it was just a bit frustrating i moved the gas i had to move the gas pumps around a few times i started with two eventually got down to one eventually it all let went and uh, now i can get rid of all of this Ooh, and don't get rid of that oops yeah perfect so, I think that... Oh, now that that's all done. Uh, how's the gas pump? <laughs> Why is that gas pump not on? Oh, we haven't finished the high-pressure gas pumps. Okay, we'll we'll vacuum this out, hopefully in record time. What's the cycle? 954. So, I may have lost track of that at some point, but I believe we are full vacuum now. Excellent. This means we can start dumping water in here and start turning this whole place into, uh, well, a hot box again. So, I think I'll skimp an awful lot more than I did last time going through this. I've uh, already filled the system with some petroleum. Should be fine. Ooh, one quick trick I'm going to use here as well. This place is now a vacuum and I am going to be filling it with carbon dioxide. So currently all the excess carbon dioxide that I, I can't use in here, I'm dumping into space. So all I've done is I've set up some gas pipes here where I can take all of that instead and dump it into this room. Start pre-filling it with carbon dioxide. And they're siphoned so if this place does fill up with carbon dioxide, they'll just go right back filling up into space. That just makes sure I don't... Uh, well, burn myself by having this whole place overfill with carbon dioxide. I'm going to need to fill this up, pressurize this whole place to about 17 or 18 kilos, so might as well start now, I suppose. Uh, last time I heated up one of these rooms, I used water and steam, and I just kept heating it using these, uh, using a, ah, a refinery, a metal refinery. This time I'm letting the metal refinery heat up just the natural carbon dioxide I've dumped into the room. Now, Carbon dioxide has terrible thermal capacity, so all I've done is I've made a huge radiant pipe loop that goes all the way around the room. So even though this is starting off at 175 and it's only dumping heat into carbon dioxide, which is not great, it's still getting cooled down quite rapidly because the carbon dioxide is exchanging heat with the granite temperature shift plates. So I'm just going to queue up a, well, a bunch of operations and let them just keep running around. This should eventually heat everything up here to about 150. I should maybe set up a temperature sensor. Mm, actually, you know what? Let's just... Save. Yeah, give me 30. 30 will be fine. If something pops, uh, I'll regret it. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go on and tackle the other two. I've done three natural gas, or two of the natural gas geysers. I've got this one done. Uh, I've also just finished off this one. Oh, I may have accidentally vented a lot of it. That was a mistake. Uh, if it's only if it's above... Yeah, let's leave you there for now. I, I haven't actually hooked you up to the grid. I just want to make sure you don't dump any more natural gas into the surrounding environment. But that's just a case of running that pipe over to my um, my main feed. There we go. I've got that uh, now hooked up right to that centralized uh, natural gas feed, right going into my in going into my industrial sauna. This uh, atmosphere sensor is just set to 500 grams. That way, if this ever does spit out any natural gas, what's the rate on that? Yeah, 437. So that'll be able to keep up, dump it all, and stockpile it in this tank if my main feed is full. Just uh, it gives me a, a little bit of a backup reserve. I'm going to get rid of that door now. And there we go. That's that one done. Now, next up, I've got another one up here I've started work on. Wow, okay, we're going around the map a lot. Oh, how did you end up out there? Stop. Are you asleep? More diggity. Poor, poor dear, you got stuck up there, didn't you? Come on, dig that. How can you not dig that tile? The tile is... Oh yeah, someone else has already got uh, dibs on it, haven't they? Well, go on. Go on back to base now, you'll be fine. <laughs> You're awake? Yeah, go home. Yeah, uh, this will be where the uh, where I've got another natural gas uh, geyser built in, and I'm just going to do the exact same thing again. And here we have... 
natural gas geyser number three tapped into. Exact same thing again. Straight through a gas tank. However, this time I'm just uh, dumping all the excess gases out here, and then I'm going to route it up th to my base, sort of. Well, I was either going to have to go all the way around my base, which would be really long, or I just go in through the go this way across the top, just avoiding that. Uh, what do you call that? Polluted water vent. Yeah, the slush geyser. Oh, one second. I did a little bit of changing around there. There was no natural gas geyser or natural gas pipe leading out, so I just uh, dumped that in there. So now that's going to feed into that natural gas section. All I have to do now is just let this sucker finish, and once the everything except natural gas has gone out of here, which should hopefully be pretty soon, then I can just plug that into the system by re-piping re this. I'll just dump the pipes up into there. How much oxygen is left? Come on. Ugh. Seriously? I might just eat the the damage to my natural gas generators. You know what? I'll, I'll just eat the damage. There's that little piece of oxygen in there is coming out very, very... Oh, it's gone. Never mind. If I had just waited a minute, I could have avoided that. Don't care. A little bit of damage to the natural gas generators for putting the wrong element into them, but that's the third natural gas generator done. However, that does leave one... or third natural gas geyser done. That does leave one, and I've discovered an annoying problem. I left that tile there, and that's actually got 256 grams of polluted oxygen, which, yeah, I've decided I'm not going to care about it. I'm just going to let it vent into this room. Uh, also, the temperature in here is rising really slowly. I had to queue up another 50 iron to iron ore. It's still not heating this room up fast enough. Turns out there's a lot of thermal mass in that much granite. I have no, how much, no idea how much granite I put in this time, but not quite as much as what there was in the first run, but there's enough that it's taking a bit of time. Anyway, time to add this natural gas generator to the... Hmm. You know what? I think I'll leave that walled in just for now. But I think it's time we started breaching these rooms and connecting the two together. I just want to finish off the final layer of insulation down here. That there should insulate the bottom of this off quite nicely. I'm going to need to put in some mesh tiles here in this layer, so I want, I want a double layer of insulated tiles to make sure none of the heat is leaking out of here. It's probably one of the hotter parts of my base, and I don't want to turn the whole map to 150. I want the whole map to be about 80 to 90 degrees. That I'm happy with, but uh, anything over boiling just starts getting annoying. Well, this is still warming up. It, I'd forgotten how long this takes. I've uh, expanded the incubator setup. We're going to need to have a lot more incubators if we're going to be running more sixters. So I now have four incubators instead of two, and it's the same thing again. All the eggs come in through this side, they get dropped off here. If any of these incubators need an egg, it gets dumped in there, otherwise it gets dumped into an evolution chamber, uh, which transforms them to meat, and the meat gets sent over to our kitchens. Done and dusted. Now, I think it's about time we almost brought this in. Actually, no, wait, 80 degrees? I need to get everything in here up to about 100 degrees just to make sure... Well, anything less than that just feels wrong, because that's where I'm going to be... Grow uh, that's what the slicksters are going to need to survive, or to, well, keep t staying as molten slicksters. So I'll just run this a bit more. I've even started dumping some steel through here just... Just in the hopes that I can get the temperature up here in here up just a little bit faster. Well, I'm starting to run out of time. If I leave this much longer, I won't get the video up in time. In fact, I'm kind of almost there, but uh, I'm going to speed this along. I want to dump the, the new slicksters in here as soon as possible. I'm just pulling in a few more temperature shift plates, cutting through the dividing layer between these two just a little bit so we can uh, join them up a bit more. And right now, I think it's time we let the we let everything flow between the two areas. Why not? Uh, also, I'm popping out these slicksters, so I have a, a nice stockpile of a few slicksters here that I can dump into the newest uh, the newest ranches the moment they become available. You know what? Uh, let's get this all connected. One great big happy industrial sauna. Industrial power sauna? Industrial power sauna, that was it. Triple barrel name. Uh, once this is uh, online, I think once this is connected, I'm going to remove this liquid lock. I don't need it, plus it's going to dump an awful lot of heat out there if I'm not careful. But that, that should be it. Now it's just a case of, uh, well, we're putting in a few more Slickster farms, or Slickster ranches, and connecting the whole thing up. I think I'm just going to put in mesh tiles through here, but the rest of it I'll leave as insulated tiles. I don't want any of that gas pushing through. I just want the carbon dioxide down here. I'm not going to let any of the water from these areas fall down into this area. There's not going to be that much heat producing buildings down here. If there is, I can modify them later. Anyway, quick skip forward while we get some more of this set up. Okay, I think I'm going to call it a day at this one. It's, yeah, I've, I've got very little time to get this uh, compiled enough. But we've con combi I've combined the two rooms now and the carbon dioxide pressure has equalized out. I've had, a, had to add in a third carbon dioxide vent to get the carbon dioxide out of here. 
Oh, I can delete those now. I don't need to be, since the rooms are now connected, I can get rid of those. I'll also be doing a, a few more, connecting them in a few more places. I might uh, remove some of the mesh, the tiles over there just to let uh, the gases flow better. Temperature wise, it's not hot enough down the bottom just yet, but I'll, I'll run a few more batches through here and it will get warmer. Uh, I've cut three fresh new stables up for slicksters, which is perfect. I've already hooked them in with their, uh, with the automation so that's a lot more eggs that should hopefully be coming in or a lot more meat for a lot more barbecue i used to be at four million in barbecue at one point now i'm down to seven hundred forty eight thousand. this should hopefully help counteract that uh, once i i'm also going to put in about another three slickster ranches as well say one two three and this also gives me an awful lot more space to put in battery storage more transformers more power just lots more space this the industrial sauna no longer fits on one screen i have to zoom out to get a to get a good look at it that's a that's very productive looking. I mean, okay, it's a bit naked down near the bottom, but we'll add some more in there. It'll it'll, it'll definitely be crammed full of stuff by the time we're finished. Anyway, uh, oh, and next up we're going to be, yeah, I think one of the first things I'm going to do is hook this up and get a, a power generator running off that. I'm going to hook up a couple of steam turbines to that uh, magma output, and yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, as well as that, that's all done. What else was there? I think we got, what done in this? We got a petroleum boiler, hooked up three oil wells. Uh, hooked up a magma tank over here, uh, connected up one, two, three natural gas geysers, and we expanded our hot industrial sauna to, uh, industrial power sauna to quite a large scale and put in three slickster farms. I know this wasn't all the rocketry stuff, but, uh, this, this was kind of what needed to be done because I needed the food, I needed the power, I needed everything. You know, so the next episode I'll probably have to still tidy up a bit more. I still have, I still have three cool steam vents I've got to hook up. Plus, I also want to tap into that to turn that into power. Uh, yeah, and I also need to sieve all of that. But we should start on rocketry, at least, or start on the, the more advanced sections of rocketry in the next section. Oh, and I keep sending these rockets off to get more and more uh, resources. What have they come back with now? Yeah, more fullerene, more... Ooh, they come back with less every trip? What's going on? One second. Uh, okay, I was not paying too much attention to this, and I was not doing it right. It turns out, if you go into the star map here, it tells you the masses of the planets. Current mass, maximum mass, minimum mass, all this. Yeah, so all this is telling me here is the maximum mass is 128,000. Minimum mass is 127,988. This means 12 tons. This has a maximum harvestable amount of 12 tons. Once those 12 tons are gone, well, good luck. So I've harvested pretty much this entire planet and I'll have to wait until it replenishes before I can do anything else with it. That's frustrating. So there's only 12 tons of mass available and then I gotta move on to harvesting something else, which would be much further away. You know what, I'm gonna cut out the rocket launching until I get into liquids though. Uh, this is going to make things very annoying. That means six rocket launchers will pretty much drain that entire planet. Ugh, this is going to make rocketry so much more frustrating. Anyway, let's uh, end on a sour note then, I suppose. Oh, but uh, on the bright side, I do have lots and lots of hydrogen stored up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, well, large-scale amount of projects, and uh, good luck.